So thank you everybody for coming to this images on Apple to Computers, Woo! which Apple will be presenting for the next hour and a quarter or so. We appreciate him bumping his session back and running it longer. After that, there's going to be some free time between then and dinner. But in the meantime, we'll be looking at a variety of new and old computers, courtesy Jeff. Thank you. Thank you, Ken. Hey, Jeff. Hi, thank you. I'm Jeff Weiss, and I'm presenting disk images on Apple II computers, um, and specifically, um, and, I don't know, ironically in this case, open source solutions. So it's uh, pretty exciting to see the open source um, uh, products uh, being developed for the Apple II, and uh, it ties in uh, modern computing with uh, uh, Apple II usage. So, and unfortunately, I don't have screen mirroring, so I won't we'll be looking at the screen mirroring so often. Uh, I'll be covering two specific products. Um, they'll be mounted, which is 2G specific. And I have with me um, uh, for uh, the K-Fest debut mm -hmm. a prototype smart port VHD, um, which I'm very excited about. And I'd love to share um, this great product. Um, I'm super excited about it and I uh, think it's a, a great concept. And, uh, We'll see more examples of its use on 16-bit platforms, 8-bit platforms, and um, basically, please don't hesitate to ask questions as we move along. All right, uh, Mountain. Mountain, uh, I believe, was originally released uh, over a year ago, but the last version, 1.4, was released this past March. Uh, it uh, mounts disk images within GSOS. I, don't know if this was the first uh, OS to do it, but I remember uh, Mac OS Seven, uh, Mac OS Seven rather, had the ability of you double clicking on a disk image and then you know on, on, a, on a disk image file that was on your disk, and it would pop up a disk um, as if it was a you inserted a disk in the drive, and I thought that was a great great um, concept, and basically mounted uh, provided that capability uh, to the Apple II GS when released. Um, so, uh, it uh, mounted will uh, take the disk image, load it into RAM. So you have to have as much free RAM as the uh, disk image itself, uh, as is noted. A uh, disk image can be as small as 32K and as large as available RAM. So if you have 8 megs of RAM, uh, you know, you have a 6, 7 uh, megabyte disk image um, once GSO is loaded and all your extensions and whatnot. Um, the disk image formats that, the, well, the file formats that now it supports are DOS order, DOS order, Pro DOS order, and two IMG files. Mountain is a single permanent initialization uh, file, which goes in your system system setup directory. Um, it supports up to 60 volumes, so as long as you have enough RAM, um, you can support up to, you can load up. 16 smaller disk images. Uh, disk images can be read or rewrite. Um, this can be locked or unlocked using uh, Apple GS, Apple GS terminal, uh, terminology. If you lock the file, then the disk is reprotected. Uh, when, if you're within GSOS and you switch to Protoss 8, uh, mount it, uh, no longer runs. Uh, since uh, basically all GSOS activity at that point shuts down, uh, being a, a driver uh, uh, technology uh, does shut down, and so uh, everything does unload um, when switching. And as it mentions, uh, uh, volumes will not be accessible under Proton State. Uh, there's no way to have GSOS uh, managing the some sort of virtual drive technology for Proton State to understand. So, the software uh, is available both as an SH, SHK file and as a disk image. Um, and I'll, I'll only link to the disk image uh, version, uh, but if you go to the website, I wrote the links, uh, all the links, uh, the SH, SHK file is there. I like the, the disk image because it includes installer, source code, uh, full enchilada. Um, and in fact, I probably did not check to see if SH, SHK actually includes all of that footage. Um, I only access the, uh, the the disk image myself. Um, I, I, have, I have a question. Sure. Yes, Ken. Is, 
is that a chicken and egg situation? I mean, if you can mount the mounted disk image, then do you need mount it? Uh, you said within GSXK, right? Or you it's into, into what? Well, I mean, that is a, a disk image file, right? Yes. We could use ADT Pro to transfer it across, and then work with, and then you could use that to more easily work with this image once you've got it. As touching on the irony as Ken pointed out, if you don't have a means of mounting disk images, and then you get the disk image file onto your computer, no, you still can't open it. So, but if you have an emulator and you put the disk image within your emulation as a set of disks to read, and then once you have the internal the files there, you get the files over to the 2GS, that is accessible. But then that ties into the second product of how you can tie all this stuff together. They, they, do, they, they do distribute it as both in a, a disk image and an SHK archive. Right, so if what, you have, yeah, yeah, Jeff said that. Okay, I but that. I'm wondering why he prefers the disk image format. Because I was doing all the testing under emulation. <laughs> so it's easier just to slap the yep. disk image in my emulator. Absolutely. And it's all there. Will you be explaining why it's valuable to run a program like this on an emulator instead of a real GS? It's an interesting question. Um, I I was not expect I was I did not have anything planned to say about that. Um, and it's good uh, say I can explain it now. Explain it later. I'll probably forget it later if I don't explain it now. Um, short answer is no. There, I can't think of any better any good reason why you would like to use it in an emulator other than just having fun with this images within. Uh, your 2GS uh, environment. Um, as a developer, you know, I would create a disk image uh, for distribution, um, and then if you want to test it as well, it just to make sure it's still accessible, it's a good concept for those who might have it. Um, but for actual everyday usage, um, no, because I actually never still mounted on my production system, except for KFest. Um, sorry, Antoine. Um, so, it was, it was more of, of looking back at, oh, this was a cool thing that was running on the Mac, and now we have it with the 2GS. Um, and it ties in well with the, uh, my second product, just in case it did not arrive from France uh, um, uh, late last week. I had to cover all my bases. Thank you. <laughs> so, on to the live demo. So, I have to live. Uh, how do I just skip to go down? Thank you, Mr. GSOS. So I'm going to start up a uh, case here. I'm, I'm doing this uh, live demonstration purely in emulation. Just basically for speed. Uh, I'll not say for speed, but just get things done faster. So my disk image is already, so it's already loaded up and I have mounted, uh, actually I have mounted already installed, but I'm actually going to go through the whole installer um, environment so you can see what it looks like. So I have the mounted disk image uh, it, it's, as if someone had written this directly to a disk already. Um, I have the mounted uh, floppy disk image that shows with hard drive because I mount all of my um, disk images uh, as a hard disk within kegs. So, we can see the uh, the use of um, what's all the files um, available here. We have a standard Apple IIgs installer. It's a little hard to move the mouse and look backwards. If we run it, if we run it, you just, you know, it'll be the only item to install. Click install, or select your hard disk you want to install it on. Um, the, the, the first drive will be your boot drive, and that's where we want to install it. And it, within emulation, it installs virtually instantaneously. So we're going to obtain it to go you, on. You can also drag copy it to the right folder, right? If you don't want to use the installer. Sure, yeah, it's just a single yeah. um, system extension. You just drag it to your system folder. Um, is that an emulator HD one? Yes, this is all emulation. Including the files. And the reads, yes. And just the installer is smart enough to say, oh, you change your system, you have to reboot. I feel like I'm running Windows or Mac and such right now. So I restart the system, and if we're running kegs, it's going to blow it up in about two seconds, which is why I prefer using emulation for some of these de demos. Of course, in real life, it can take a minute or longer. And so I have one way of ensuring that mount it is actually installed and running 
you can go to your extras uh, menu within the finder and you'll see a new menu item that says update disk images. And I'll explain what that is in a moment. So um, I've created a, uh, a, in this case, a disk image with tons of disk images. So this is a standard Protoss file system. Um, I have a bunch of disk images in here. I have examples of a .pl, Protoss order, and a .2mg, uh, or .2img, like whatever you want to call those. Uh, and so example, so uh, when I, I used, when I put these disk images within uh, a disk image, this is a horrible way of describing this, hopefully you're following. Um, uh, the files, and I used the Kex uh, 2 Pro application to move the files within a, a new uh, disk image. Uh, they were all uh, added as uh, TXT files. So before I came here, I used, and you can use any application you want, but the one that I that just had available with me is Disk Access 2, uh, which is very convenient for uh, modifying uh, file contents. Um, so finding, so this is about uh, test. So now the test, uh, window. I can go to here and forget the shortcut, but if you do file, show in, which show with a file info, uh, you, know, you can modify stuff within this access too. So that's what I did. So I changed all this to a nodes to make it feel like I'm using some random, like MS DOS disk or something like that. Uh, the main reason is within my GSOS, GSOS environment, text files was being transferred to another program, so mouse it was not recognizing it. So I had to switch it to a file type that would not that mount that mount it could handle. So I have a tool one twenty eight, which is eight hundred k disk image. I double click that. Oh, I did that already. And because of so many volumes here, it shows them on the side. And oh, it off. come on, opens up. And here we go, um, a virtual disk image that's now fully loaded into GSRAM, and you can now access it just like a standard GSOS desk. Uh, so if we want to do something like, to prove that we can uh, make changes, let's say we duplicate the directory and let it do its thing real quickly, uh, this is all great. So I've added, I've filled up the disk, and to save any changes, we have to go to the new menu item in the extras menu and say update disk images. If you don't do that, then the changes that you've made in RAM will not get written back to the disk image. So what I'm going to do is close, close this, unmount this. Because it creates a floppy disk, we can go trash it. It's now gone. <coughs> and to prove that it's really closed, I'll go ahead and reboot the computer to clear all the RAM. And we'll see that when we reboot, uh, the tool 128 will contain all the changes that we made before. And of course, it is, this is full. And we have that copy of the hash, and this is with the source code uh, to the uh, hash tool set that I updated back in uh, earlier this year, January, February, time period. All right, and of course, that was a proof of a Protoss order. And if we go look at a 2IMG, uh, we'll go view in uh, sizes to find something that's not a 100K disk. So the Lemmings disk image is a 3 meg file, so it's larger than a disk image. Let me end here. And because I have it already mounted as a real disk, we'll say that we'll rename the new volume to Lemmings 2. Uh, so even though that this is a 3 meg disk image, will still show up as a floppy disk because GSOS will treat this as an injectable device. And we have the contents of the disk image there. How much virtual RAM are you running in your emulator? I went ahead and did all 14 uh, that megs. That seems advisable. Um, especially for an emulation. Um, I, 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 up until I was testing this, I was running out of RAM when I had only the 4 meg um, uh, memory. So. I made sure that this would work. I, I found that when playing Sweet 16, I discovered that if mounted does not have enough memory, it crashes you cold into the monitor. That's right. I did run to that. I wanted to avoid seeing the crash happen here. 
Um, that's probably a bug that should be reported to the developers. I never intended to. I don't know if I did. Okay. On a real GS, I've never had a crash in a monitor, but it will just hang. You know, if you double click on it, and nothing appears to happen. So, so, something's getting trashed, and it depends yeah. if it's trashing as hanging or monitor. Um, it, right. it may not necessarily be a bug in the software. It could be something else that is not liking the scenario. Yeah. Um, could you just be forgetting to check the yeah. make sure you have enough RAM first? I, I, I don't know. Um, I, I sort of hid that from the demo to uh, say you know, all the memory just, just saying, give enough. yourself enough memory. <laughs> As Ivan said, yes. Um, if you have the capability of giving yourself more memory, special emulation, max it out completely. If you're running it on real hardware, uh, buy more memory. There are people here who sell more memory. <laughs> <laughs> Right, Tony? Yeah. Okay. Sweet. Does it ship? Any questions about the uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. find out right. I sort of touched. Yes, um, Jeff. The you're doing all this in the finder. Do the disk images show up in the standard file dialog oh, box? Great as question. Well? So I mounted Lemmings to I mounted the tool one twenty eight. So um, my, and again going back to the disk access to my favorite tool to see online devices and you'll be seeing me use this more than just for this example. And from here this is all my volumes. Um, if we scroll down to, I have two, we have Lemmings, which is the hard drive, and then we have Lemmings 2, which is the fake 3.5 inch disk. So you can see here that JordanOS has all these devices um, available. And if you want to prove this within Orca as well, go out of here, go into Orca, it would do type show units, and um, it will cycle for all the devices and the new devices at the end. Yes, completely. As uh, they can see that it's the device type is labeled as disk image, so it's a unique uh, device type. I, I think that's the, I'm not sure what the right terminology is. So I'll make up the word if that's not correct. Uh, so we know that it's not a 3.5 inch drive. It's not a 5.4 inch drive. So if you're writing some JSON software that you want to detect what kind of device is this really, if it's really a disk or is it something else, well. This unique identifier now that you can use to say that, oh, this is a melted uh, disk image, assuming no one else develops any software that uses that same type of name in their own software. But great question, thank you. Any other questions? Uh, so now? A just side issue. Uh, as I recall, at least in ProDOS 8, I don't know about uh, GSOS. You wanted to stop the listing so you could see all the files and not have them all off the top of the screen. You got to hit, was it uh, Control S is pause. S or Control, what was it? Control, control S is pause. Control S, right. Pause yes. it. And again, to start again. Yes. So that's what you have to do. Well, first of all, mount it uh, disk images or volumes, rather, let me use that terminology. <laughs> Is not accessible from Protoss 8. So if you were to enter Protoss 8, and you know that sounds like a good thing to try, so let's go ahead and I just like closing windows while I'm not using them. So if we go to Protoss 8, and so we know that we know it's tool 128. Go to Protoss 8. If I try to prefix tool 128, let's go here. It will say no. It will they say device not found or something like that, or whatever the message was going to be. I, I did test that before here, but yeah. Um, so, and now if you were to quit back to GSOS, those images are no longer and, on your... Right, uh, thank you, Jeff. Yes, I can. It can't use uh, Unix exit here, can I? No. So, and we can see here that all 3.5 inch drives are now no longer showing. Uh, they have a good, we can verify that not just the finder's hiding it, but we can look at this too, to see what the status of those devices are. And uh, if I could probably sort by kind. Yes, no, I would go to this. <laughs> Uh, where this window? Just pull that, pull that triangle. Oh, thank, thank you. Shows you. Those are those are. So go by format. Those are no type. <coughs> go to type profile. I'll do this all the way through. I'm not hiding anything. I'm going to drives profiles. And the two three point five five inch drives are just the kegs uh, slot or port five um, three point five inch drives. You can see that there's no. Uh, Nothing in there, the block size is zero. So yes, all the uh, mounted uh, volumes were removed. Um, were, were gone by the time we came exited from Proto State because because 
it proved at work frankly that it closed when entry quote on safety. And not safe. Remember to update before you and only to make changes you have to do to find it right exactly as as Rob pointed out. Um, if you do make changes, if you're like saving files into the dis into the disk image volume, uh, make sure you do within the finder update it uh, before entering Proto Safe or you? just don't use Proto Safe. Will it warn you at all that uh, you're going to be it's unmounting them and, and did you see it? any? I, I didn't make any changes. You didn't make any changes before okay, you went good. Let's, let's try that. I, uh, I believe someone already commented that it doesn't, and I guess it won't perform, you know, for certain? Yeah. yeah. All right. So um, it's already been tested, and we'll skip that example here. So uh, what you're saying is it doesn't do it? It does not yeah. provide a warning. Um, it probably has a couple complications. What if you use something like ProCell, the text based application to enter Proto State, versus a graphic GUI like the Finder or some other graphical program? Um, it, May be too complex, um, and it may not yeah. even be a way of knowing that something's not protected. Uh, yeah, uh, I know. What well, you're uh, Marinetti can just act when you're already heard about saying, and the person on that search. Yes, but so, so, so the, the same mechanism. Oh, oh of course, the code has to run, and in this case, Marinetti does alert that, but the mechanism's there. Just this, this, yeah, doesn't this use doesn't use it. it. And, and the other point is, you only really want to see the error if you made a right to um, one of the uh, virtual volumes. So the, uh, more checks have been done to know that if you make oh, a yeah. change. Yeah. Um, so there's a lot of extra things there. And the finders, of course, is always writing to the uh, the finder press or whatever the, yeah. we say dot finder directory, but it's not dot finder. But the hidden finder directory so is always making changes. And you don't really want to see that work every single time because it's always going to make changes. So is this the right way? Is this the wrong way? Just be careful is what, what George is trying to say is, you have to manually make the, make the effort because you don't make it the warning. If you want to pay for it, then you can come find I like Rob's idea. <laughs> yeah. If you paid money for it, maybe uh, the feature will be added. I've already pointed out that you'll be very annoying very quickly. Any other questions on uh, Melted before we head on to the next section? How are we doing for timing? Oh, pretty good. Well, there's nothing after you. Right. It's just I was just timing because I know how long the next piece is going to be. There'll be a very complicated uh, orchestra of moving cables and whatnot. Wow! That's I can cool. do that. <laughs> Thank you, Tony. <laughs> I'm seeing the screen in front of me now. <laughs> it's like, oh wow, we can do that. Run, run mouse. I use a two GS mouse. Two GS. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, just you look at the screen. Now. Just got. It. Yeah. Now I have to look over there to handle the laptop. Oh. Yeah. So over here now. The problem is my virtual window is over here. And, and, yes. <laughs> I'm trying to keep the crick out of your neck. There. Thank you. This is a fun day. All right. All right. Now back into presentation. All right. Now on to the next piece: the smart port VHD. Oh, oh thank, thank you. Hi, hi. I'm just excited. Thank you for your presentation. It's a collection of computers, monitors, and everything. Modern technology for our level two. Well, All right, we so, can't see it. It's behind the monitor right now. <laughs> oh, <laughs> me behind the monitor. So the SmartPort VHD. Uh, this has been something that's been worked on for the last four, five, six months or so uh, by Cedric Pompier. The wrong keyboard. Wrong keyboard. <laughs> uh, I don't have Cedric Peltier, um, it's a USB storage solution to connect to a disk port. Um, with the Thunder already stolen a couple days ago, I guess yesterday already, with the CFA, CFFA 3000 being able to handle disk images off of the USB stick, that's exactly what uh, this is going to be as well. Uh, connect, and I'll we'll demo this in a minute. I have a uh, bunch of stuff to talk about. Uh, 
It's a prototype device. Please do not be disturbed. It does say in the bottom, the KFS prototype. Uh, I, I, I'm not involved, I, I am not involved with the development of it, um, but I did volunteer to do the presentation for it at KFest. So, USB stick, plug it in, and um, you have disk images you can take from a emulator environment, uh, or through any other means of downloading and storing onto a USB drive, and they'll show up as drives within the Apple II operating systems. All so, all what was the question? All Apple II operating systems? Uh, products? Regular? On it will be, it will, the, it will support, there are three operating systems supported. GSOS, Protoss 8, Apple Pascal. Cool. Those are the three operating systems that will have direct support for extended smart port or some smart port device that was extended because that might be going on too much. I don't know the details at that level. They said it as GS anyway, so. Yes, that's why I'm about to say that and realize I'm probably going too far. Uh, so, mass storage solution. Uh, initially, it was when Central uh, started working on this, he was looking at um, a solution for the Apple IIc but because uh, the disk port technology is available on the 2GS, uh, the Liron card for the 2E, uh, it is extendable for multiple Apple II platforms. Uh, because it's a smart port device, no additional drivers are needed to be downloaded. Uh, a, the USB stick is going to be your standard uh, MS-DOS FAT uh, formatted drive. Uh, and uh, for managing or creating uh, disk images, uh, Cinepress is often recommended as a great way of managing the uh, disk image files themselves. Uh, with the way the embedded firmware is coded right now, uh, it'll handle up to 10 disk images uh, under GSOS, uh, Protoss 8 2.0 or later, and up to 4 with Protoss 8 1.9. Uh, I did mention that there is some Pascal compatibility. I'm assuming it's somewhere at a two or four level. Uh, that was not tested. I do not have any Pascal, Apple Pascal formatted file systems to even, or, or the an operating system environment to test that. Um, but there is some level of support uh, with that. Uh, Protoss 8, of course, has a limit of 32 meg Protoss file systems. So 10 32 meg file systems, 300 meg, 320 megs. Of, of hard disk storage uh, instantly accessible for you. JSON uh, will handle any disk images where you ha where you have the FST installed on the system, uh, and no examples of HFS uh, and uh, and HFS as a disk and as an ISO uh, CD-ROM file. What did you say the stick was formatted as? It, it's fact. And, that uh, file system, which is basically um, MS DOS, okay. uh, well, extended DOS, whatever. So Fat sixteen or Fat thirty two. Uh, it, it's uh, whatever Windows Vista installed it uh, to format it as works fine. So you can tell me if it's that's probably Fat thirty two. It has to be. But could it be? Could there be a stick installed that was either Unix or Linux or Mac? You, uh, you, you'd have to format yeah, it as MS DOS or FAT32, I would assume. What size is that flash drive? Uh, great question. This flash drive specifically is a uh, 2 gig flash drive. I, I think 2 gig might require FAT32, so. Yeah, yeah. and I did I did use an 8 gig. Uh, I tested with an 8 gig, which has to be um, yes. uh, FAT32. It worked fine. I don't have the 8 gig stick here. It accidentally uh, ran through the washer. Um, <laughs> so, uh, and I doubt it'll work yet, but. But you never know. Uh, it is drying right now, and well, not now, but it is drying, and we'll see after coming from KFest if it will work again. Uh, but I do know uh, the, high, the higher capacity drives do work fine, as well as even the lower capacity drives. I have a 256 meg. Uh, drive, which I don't think I have out here, but yeah, I'm not going to use that for the actual demo. But I'm doing most of my testing for the lower size as well. Uh, let's see. 
So, uh, great uses for a smart port VHD. Uh, so, uh, software developer vendors can now distribute software on a USB stick instead of a floppy disk. Uh, a lot of uh, USB sticks are, well, are given away for free, so the cost of media may even be cheaper than floppy disks. Um, so the, cost, the cost of using that media at the other end is this device. Exactly, right. And another thing I said was, and, and great for getting uh, uh, content to and from emulator environments. Uh, to have your virtual, you have your disk image that using the emulator, just drag it to your USB stick, and you can boot into your uh, you can boot your emulator environment directly on your real app too. Um, and that I found was the coolest concept ever. Uh, having put more effort, you know, in recent years in the emulator environment instead of the, app, the real opportunity environment, it's just like, wow, I have it here now instead of just here. So, um, touching briefly on uh, the uh, expected cost and the products that are available, the information was captured from the SmartPort uh, VHD website, and I don't remember if I posted it, uh, mentioned it yet, and I, I don't remember if I actually put it in the slides, but. Uh, it's uh, www.spvhd.com. Site line is public, um, and hopefully I gave you the right URL. But this might be one testing the audience right now. So there's two versions that were expected to be uh, uh, available: a do-it-yourself, uh, where you just get a uh, the embedded board with the firmware um, and a wiring diagram of how to wire connectors. Uh, it, that's good. and because it's developed in France, the general cost of euros, with a general uh, uh, translation of what the uh, the dollars are, and of course it fluctuates every day. It's about thirty euros for your for yourself, forty five dollars American. Uh, the product play package, which is what this will look like, fully assembled, uh, tested uh, with the enclosure, plugs directly into the Apple two C two GS or an Apple two E with the Lerum card. With what card? Uh, for just a few bucks more. What 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 card does the TUI require? The Luron controller card. No. Okay. Is it technically called like the Luron card? Isn't it technically called something like that? Unidisc card? Yeah. Very rare. So apparently Tony can sell their um, Unidisc controller cards for those who want to buy a smart port PhD and use it as TUI. Okay. Uh, before I volunteer, he has of course agreed to that. This is the one that's rare. That's the super drive controller card. What, you have first stuff time? Anyways, going on to the next one. Um, and one of the great things I really, really liked about this project, which sold me earlier, early on, before most of this, uh, uh, most of the data became available, was it was originally designed to, originally it was, not originally, the, 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 the whole idea is to make this completely open source from the get-go. Um, open source uh, hardware, Open source embedded firmware. So if you get this, and the the um, embedded firmware will be released as well, um, and you can use whatever software it takes to create the firmware and develop extensions to your own environment. Um, since I got this last Thursday, I've upgraded the firmware twice. There's been bug fixes from when I originally got this, so uh, it will make the hardware demonstration that much cooler and much more impressive. Um, it was really easy. Um, the hardest thing that I had to do was cut two USB, USB cables in half, splice the wires together, so I had a mail-to-mail -mail connector to connect the, uh, the, the A connector on the computer to the A connector on the drive itself. And you just follow the color combinations, red to red, green to green, white to white, black to black. It just works. It worked the first time around, downloaded software, and uh, I, was, I was thrilled that, you know, I'm, I'm, this is a prototype device, it's like break, it'll like blow it up. No, it just works. So, um, uh, USB devices, uh, the Ubiquitous thumb drive, uh, also tested were the card readers with CFSD support. I'm sure any other, you know, flash media like the Sony uh, standard would also work fine. Um, was not listed or <coughs> tested specifically, but I'm sure there will be any differences. Uh, extremely powered USB hard disks. Um, one thing that someone had on KFS that we'll probably try at some point is a USB floppy drive for storing disk images. So um, we'll try that and I'll report, I'll report back to say if that's a yay or nay, but I'm, I'm pretty sure it'll probably Should work, right? I, mean, if it's I'm, I can't think of any reasons why not. I'm yeah. assuming there's enough power coming from the smart port to power it up. 
It's your fine. I, I know the reason why I might not. Then most aren't floppy bed drives technically a different USB device class for mass yeah, storage? Oh, oh, then maybe... Unless the, unless the microphones are already dealing with this. Yeah. As I will piss it out, our report back and the website will be uh, updated with that information. So as I said, the computer, so I forgot the 2C Plus was also in the support of listening. We did test that here at KFES. We tested the, the uh, two of the Leroy card. We tested the 2C Plus. So I'm actually, um, and this was basically said, it was going to work, but not tested. It's now confirmed it's tested. Um, one note, though, on the computer compatibility. On the 2C, it has to be in this 3.5 version. Because the, ori the original version of the 2C does not technically have smartphone support. Right. Okay. Well, you need, well, yeah, you need the ROM for any of them. Like, there, there's a private quarterback there. Yeah. Basically, oh, if you have right, the original, right, oh, the original, yes, original, yes, original 2C, you need a ROM right. right. on the 2C mother. Right. But that's it. Thank you, Eric, for that clarification. Uh, that was not specifically clarified on the website, but glad that was brought up. Uh, so, as mentioned, Rodas Alpha Pascal, it will boot. And, uh, and when you want to connect the smart port into a 2GS, uh, it will plug in after your 3.5 inch drives, but before your 5 quarter inch drives. And it can be interchanged anywhere with the uh, unit disk if you have a unit disk drive, also in your 2GS, and local smart port VHDs can be chained together. So we have speeds, and hopefully that's readable. I probably should have changed some of the background colors, but hopefully it's readable. Uh, mouse desk boot. On a, on a, uh, a non-accelerated Apple IIc, it's 43 seconds if you use a floppy drive. The VHD is 26 seconds. Uh, the 2GS uh, with a faster processor uh, <coughs> is even half of that, so 13 seconds. Looking at GSOS boot, booting, a micro, micro drive turbo is 23 seconds, and the smartphone VHD is 63 seconds, uh, about three times longer. But the part of the thing is, you're the a super, uh, super drive turbo is connected as, as a hardware is a card directly to the slot of the computer, and that slot does run quite a bit faster than the disk port. So this can never be compared to a speed of a hard disk uh, solution, um, and this is why I'm oh, just right here. But uh, I'm seeing this as more of a uh, a, a floppy drive slash CD-ROM solution. Uh, especially because if you look at the other products that were announced slash shown at KFEST uh, uh, this week, all the other USB solutions require you to open the computer up and the USB drive is, you know, to get inside the computer to connect it. It's not, you know, this is sitting outside the computer, plugs right in. It's just much more convenient to get to. So, uh, commenting on uh, the technology that was used, uh, the micro pendus, I'm assuming it's pronounced. Uh, I think it's called open end just wrong, but yeah, I just called that wrong. One, one less C in the middle there. Uh, so that's the main hardware component. Uh, the embedded uh, the circuit board uh, and the software, the Bluefoot USB stack, and the FATFS common file system. Uh, just throwing it out there because I, it's there. Look at Google to find out more information because it's outside of my scope at this time. All right, so now uh, I'm going to put a page that says hardware uh, presentation. So that's what we're going to go to next. And this is where we have to start moving people up there. All right, so let's do the 2GS first. It's okay, all the chips are moving. We seated all the seats, uh, chips rather, yes. To see, it's not an Apple III. <laughs> All right. So uh, my battery is dead in the two GS. It's been dead for quite a number of times, uh, quite a number of years. And I had to have solved that for you when, when it was open. Sorry, So I have to reset the slots every time. And you know what we got to do? We got to deploy the smart port. So before I do that, I want to show uh, the smart port HD. Compared to a 3.5 inch um, floppy, uh, floppy drive, you can see that it's about half the height and it will stack perfectly. That's cool. And as we said, the small port for HD, if you have a 3.5 inch drive, will daisy chain into the 3.5 inch drive. Then you would plug the 3.5 inch drive into the computer. And so, this way, so you guys can see it. That's pretty small. 
and it's very, very nice design. Looks very much like an Apple II, uh, an Apple can, device rather. Can you daisy chain them the other way? Uh, I don't know what will happen. Uh, he's got the port. There. Well, the, well, the point is, you can. This is if you pop up on your five point drive plug in here. Unit disk plug in here. You can daisy chain another smart so port. Unit disks always go behind. Right. 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 Port drives always go behind units. Three and a half. Right. Therefore, that is another point. So it has to be daisy chainable. Okay. So I will not have the three point five drive as part of the demo. Do they sell a pre yellow case so it matches my machine? Uh, I asked him a question about, oh, this doesn't match my platinum. Uh, he could not find how to get the color corrected for this. So if someone has that information, it's it, it basically designed for the 2C. So um, this is, you can see how 2C's colors have Quite changed over time. Yeah. But it's. So get the T for a week. You have to retro right here, retro right here, 2C now. I know. Alright, plug in the disk port of the 2GS. Plug in the USB stick here. Let's see, look no, that one. I made one USB stick for 2GS stuff, one USB stick for Apple II stuff. Make sure I have it there in the USB with the power off. Or uh, right, because the booting. computer is off. So I turn the computer on, I have to, to click the stick, the computer's on, you can watch the lights. Um, it, when it's now, it's after a second or two, you see the green yellow lights. That means the event firmware is loaded, it recognizes the drive. If the drive was unreadable, you would see a blinking red, yellow, green uh, lights there. Let's just scratch it this way. Okay, good. So change the slots. So uh, let's see, I get a disk port. Six, yeah, I this one. And what I'm gonna, what I'm, my first thing I'm going to do is boot my internal hard disk. So I'm not going to boot up this drive. Um, I'm, I'm going to do this at, my, at the second step, but it'll take longer uh, to do that. So boot the internal hard drive will take about a minute to load. And now we boot the computer. The second side is behaving well right now. Thank you, second side. Going to pop up the uh, Apple Talk error message, so go past that. Nothing to, that had nothing to do with the smart port being installed. It's just I it's had the it's SCC old, 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 old in, uh, hard disk that I am just using. Most importantly, when we got the boot and the laughter. Uh, my sound has been flaky on this uh, motherboard, so I will not guarantee what sounds you may or may not hear. I know. I know sales are supposed to be there, but we'll see. So this is just this is the, my internal hard disk. This is not the smart port VHD at this point in time, just to make sure uh, that you know what I'm just repeating what I'm actually doing. Um, once the finder <coughs> loads up, it will scan all the devices. I do not have any floppy drives attached. Only the smart port VHD. I only have two volumes on the internal hard disk. It's a 40 meg inner drive. So we see the two drives. Right now it's scanning the smart port, and this is not supposed to be taking this long. Oh, here we go. All right. It's just Why taking a little So we can see the activity. Ah, yeah. oh, right. Thank you for I can't see it. Here. <laughs> uh, deliver. So I must have that open the last time I used this drive. So um, we can see here, this, I'm going to go over about the screen. So um, these were the two internal drives, and HD1 um, is my emulated. Um, my, my main emulator boot drive. Uh, got some uh, code. I was uh, <laughs> my, uh, the memory 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 mega memory tester released earlier this year. Um, of course, that's downloadable at mmt no mmt .net. Um The uh, binary copy there just to show a bunch of disk images. Uh, a lot of stuff seems familiar. Uh, HFS is an HFS file system. Um, it's for it's about ten. 10 uh, megs in size. This is a disk image that's 800K. And this is a, uh, uh, a, uh, one of uh, a, uh, a 
a nice little image of a CD-ROM that Ken had uh, released publicly available. I forgot what the EDAC stood for. It's free to Apple Corps. What he says. I'm not going to try to pronounce the French word. And, uh, and you can see that this is a, a 720 or so, yeah, 720 uh, meg disk image. And you saw how fast it loaded. Well, not loaded, but how yeah, it was there. Uh, it's it's the whole thing, and it, it's off of your floppy disk port. You basically have your you know CD ROM in it. And I think this is one of the coolest things. That's pretty cool. Um, and the only, the only example is a Protoss and HFS. Um, I did try to, it's, I, I didn't go out the way, no, I didn't go out the way. Because of other factors involved, I did not uh, try to get a regular ISO 9600 uh, image and prove that it works, but it will also work. Um, what was the question? Disassembler. Disassembler. Oh, yeah, that's the Orca product. And that's just because I have it on. That's my uh, HD one that uh, shows up. It's not part of the demo. Uh, all right. So I booted up the inner drive. It's great. So I'm going to shut down here. And I've already done. Change the slot. So I'll boot from the smart port. Slots. Of course, this changes everything all over again. Uh, Southern. Over there and I'll change this to slot. So now I'm going to, so because this is a smart a, a port five device, I'm going to boot slot five. Do a restart. Good. What happened? Oh, did it? Yeah, I think it did. I think it did. Apparently we booted. I don't care. Now, sec second site, we can go with that. Sometimes repeat this three or four times. And that's why the second site never caught on. That's it why is. it's called the second site. Here we go. I remember I had that problem. I have a lot more hardware devices, so and I think one of the original cards developed, so it might be a slight defect in the. Capacitors on this. It's that ram fast. Or yeah, Kelly yeah. thinks it's the other hardware yeah, devices. You have the original card, which actually works better. Oh, really? Oh, yes. Wow. Well, don't get rid of it. I have too much hardware hardware on my computer. Um, so right now we're now booting from the smart port VHD. This is the HD one drive. Um, I did. What I need to do is also show what the uh, disk images look like from within a modern computer to show how the uh, the images are managed. So remember, this is booting at basically floppy disk speeds. Uh, how does it determine which image it boots from? That's a great question, Jeff. That's what I realized. I forgot to mention that step. Um, I do want to show that, but um, in, in a nutshell, on the USB flash drive, because this flash drive could be shared with other information, let's say you, you transfer files between computers at home or work or whatever, uh, all you have to do is create an SPDHD uh, subdirectory. Within the subdirectory, you it's it, the, the, the embedded firmware right now um, is hard coded to look for drive 1.img, drive 2.img, drive 3, all the way through drive 9.img. So if you have the 10 of uh, disk images, uh, drive number .img, and drive and uh, drive 1.img is going to be the first. But the first one scan seat to be the boot device. If you don't have drive one, it's going to skip that, go to drive two. So you don't have to have sequential numbers. That's one of the fixes that uh, was uh, done over the weekend. Uh, so you have like drive two and drive seven, and it treats it as just the two devices. So um, it's almost loaded. I heard the sound that. Uh, the sound that the system has started. So I see this more as a, uh, not as your main root device, but if you move from something else, and this is just getting files very easy from your GGS to your emulated, emulated environment. So we can see here that it boots up, and I'm looking at this going, well, this looks, looks like my emulator right here. 
Chris Pangulator has a lot more process than Penel did, but um, it, it, it's, it's starting to look and feel correct. So we can see the uh, Smartboard VHD uh, booting up on a uh, TGS. So um, we'll quickly we'll first show the file, the file system layout and then we'll do the TC. So we'll also look at the layout on the other uh, USB stick here. To be slightly more productive in time and we'll swap the VGA table. <laughs> So I connected the USB goes. Let's just show up here. You'll see it here as well. Oh, because I have to do this. Yeah. That. Here we go. So um, I inserted the USB stick, and Solaris will say, "Yep, you inserted a USB stick." If we go look at, I usually use a command line. Oh, we use this since it opens it open, it open, it open automatically. I have the drive one, drive two, drive three. So this is going to be the eight bit example uh, USB stick. I have seven disks here, um, and the reason why I did, well, I'll mention that in a little bit, seven images, um, we can go look at, come up view, details, view. so I don't use, there we go, uh, by size. Okay, well, show details. I don't know how this works. I thought view, here we go. And you have a monitor here. Right? Yes, I realize that. I'm, because I'm, Keyboard monitors, it's, it's the wrong direction. Um, so you can see I have 800K drives and 140K drives and a 32 meg drive. Uh, actually, you know what? Well, so I'll, I'll still keep this example. And all right, so now I have to check this, and there's a slight problem with uh, this version of Open Indiana. Sorry. Mouse is not in the direction where I want to go. Here we go. So after you check this through a command line, can we have yes. a couple of the other screen? Yeah. Um, yes, over here. Um, this is, I'm just unmailing it with the command line. It's nothing, it's nothing spectacular. Pay attention to the command line screen. Just hiding a, a, a Solaris bug that we fixed on um, the next release of Open Indiana. And yes, it's actually an Oracle bug, not an open any other bug. Sorry, that command line can just command line. Alright, so um, I don't need this anymore. I can, I can switch. Okay, so the GS or Oh, let's just leave this right here. We're gonna go to 2C and if we well, need questions. Oh, yes. So shut off the GS. Uh yeah, it's fine. So this is the 2GS one, this is the 2C one. Here. Okay. Uh, I guess a related question would be, does anyone make labels for USB thumb drives? Uh, that's a good question, Jeff, if labels are made for USB thumb drives. I do not know the answer to that. USB thumb drives just see that being a problem. Now. USB thumb drives have so many different form factors. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah basically buy a... a Big sheet of sticker and cut whatever size you need from it. Right? <laughs> uh, UGS thumb drive in there. No. No, but that's why we boot. Oh, we can boot off of this. That's yeah, boot off the floppy. We're gonna boot off the floppy. I did. I did not. Yeah, set this, a, this is a. Yes. This is. A, I did not have a. I did not get the disk. I did not get a bootable. That's that's okay. pretty cool. That's pretty cool. Oh, you know that now. Ah. I know. I started. I know. I started doing that, but it's random yeah. problems and ran out of time. Well, it's just with sort of stuff. Oh, um, look at the crust. Oh, Aiden Crow. That's why Crow plays it. I'm going to go upside down. No, hold on, hold on, hold on. Bye. Ah! Oh! Don't! Just hit return. Oh, I have to do that there. Okay, so to prove the volumes are available, and this book of proof is here. I'll tap through my, okay. Oh, here we go. Yes, yes, I found it. I'll go back. So <laughs> what uh, was not obvious, and Eric has already told me, this is Protoss 1.9 we're booting into. So I did say that there's seven disk images available here, but within Protoss 1.9, you'll only see four. So if we go through all the devices on the 2C, um, 
So we have the first one here is uh, that's going to be the first device on the uh, Parkour VHD. I know, I know by volume name what it should be. Number two, number three. I might have gone too fast. Uh, I only saw three in there. I saw that one. Oh, because one of them is um, not. Oh. Because one of them is a DOS 3.3 image. The DOS 3.1, because one of the images is DOS 3.3, stuff has to show up. Yeah, because. That's why. And I remember, how did I set this up? Um, all right. As you remember, DOS 3.3 is not good wall off of this. Or that's what was described, and I did not test that one way or another, but I will accept the information um, as, it was given, as it was given. So, yes, um, because it's ProDOS 8, and because I had the one bogus disk image, what we're seeing here is exactly what I expect to see. If we had booted, if I actually had my device configured correctly, we could we could boot off of this, and um, but I didn't get that far. Uh, those are curious. We can set those who are curious. We can see that after session uh, later on the evening tomorrow, another day. So um, so far, is there anything else I wanted to talk about? Uh, I think I covered everything. Any other questions about the 8-bit uh, side, the 16-bit side, um, what it takes to manage uh, the images? Yes, I have a question. I'm not going to more basic. I'm an old-time Apple user using Apple hardware. I've never made disk images. What's your recommendation for making disk images from, for example, a 5 and a quarter to be an half inch? Great question. Great question. Uh, the disk image format that this uses is only ProDOS order. So if you have two, uh, two IMG uh, support, um, it needs to be converted into ProDOS order. Uh, it'll be neat if, you know, maybe for a Hackmax project, for some little tool to do that. Um, otherwise, um, I believe Cytopress may have that capability. I don't know. I actually don't use Cytopress. Uh, I tend to use Fishwings. Um, as the main uh, program, both side of Fresh Fresh Wings will work um, under Mac, Windows, Linux, Solaris. Um, if you're using Mac, Linux, Solaris, you do need, need to use Wine, uh, but it will work. Uh, side of Press does need extra libraries to download within your Wine, wine environment to work. That's why I tend to use Fresh Wings because I'll have to work with all this additional crud. Um, but Fresh Wings does not support converting from the. I couldn't pull. I didn't read the manual per se, but I could not find through the normal menu structure how to convert from a 2MG to ProDOS order. So um, the solution I did was use a program called BVI, Binary VI, within um, a Unix environment, and you just delete the first 64 bytes, and bam. Yeah. Yeah. You can use that, but a, lot, but a lot of distributions do not include BVI by default. But it was a very quick and dirty way to do that conversion. If you're in Unix, you can do it with DD. Right? You just copy the files and do a skip equals 64. Oh. There you go. Another great way. Well, good idea. Uh, on a Unix machine, uh, DD is a, a standard Unix component, and it's, it, 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 it copies files. And you can give it a parameter that says, start up position 64, <laughs> and then the output is the... Everything except for the first Everything except bytes. for the, the 2 header. That's different. So, but to answer your question, Dean, for someone who um, is looking for something more purely oriented, uh, Cytopress is the only tool, um, there may be some other tools, but there's Cytopress, and it does take a little extra work to get that working under uh, Mac OS and SX. But I think that would be a great idea at a presentation at another KFS to say, let's, how can we leverage wide utilities under non-Windows systems? Uh, I believe Eric had a question up there. Well, I was more just, uh, so are you, are you trying to, do you have disks that you need to turn into disk images? I have, or, uh, literally have the floppy disk. Oh, I misunderstood uh, the question. I'm so, sorry. So, so to, in, in that, that yeah. image. Okay, so what, what computer do you? To the point, point, I'm wondering I have both. Okay, so so there's a couple ways you can go, really. Um, it's it's I was probably using well, the uh, best with a five and a quarter and a half inch drive. Yeah, it fits in with what I was going to ask. Go to SCSI. So so and okay, so SCSI, the, I can move over to a upgrade you know, back to the machine. So that's one way. So the, there's various ways to do it using um, Image Maker, which I think Shepi does. Yeah. 
that you can use ADT Pro to transfer over serial or Ethernet. That's what I'm talking Yeah, ADT Pro is one of the popular ones for that. And the image maker. Yeah. Um, or you can do what you suggested. If you have a SCSI card already, then you can definitely use, Im use Image Maker, make images, put them on your SCSI drive, and then put them wherever. That, that's probably the easiest way or to find Or you can have one of us come by. Yeah, right there. Yeah. Well, I don't have anything here. Okay. Yeah, the touch is, is there any way so from the Apple II to create a Jeff, to make hold, hold the question. I want to touch more yeah. base on the <laughs> What I would, one thing I would do is I would just create a blank file that's like 32 bits in size, put that on the USB stick, then within the Apple II environment, you format it as another device, and then you just use the smartphone VHD yeah. to copy all your files over. So it's not, so any copy, it will not work with copy protected disks, but if you just have individual files, this is the simplest way of doing it. And this is why I really, really like it because I do not like any other solution for getting files too much from a 2 yeah, so What ends up happening people. then is you can actually create yourself a blank 140K disk image on there, form it as a 140K, oh. and then just copy your data on it. Right. Right? Or, and then you or, have a disk image. But if, you, if, if you have a 140K disk, though, that isn't ProDOS or is, you know, a not standard file system, you actually can't, you, Image Maker does not, it looks like it supports them, but it doesn't work. Should be okay, right, that is true. Yeah. Right. yeah, but this only works with ProDOS images anyways. Uh, right, so as long if you have oh, ProDOS yeah. files, you copy them on. HFS, right. Right. which yeah. can support any others, but yeah. Well, yeah. Well, Imaging well, five and a quarters is another discussion. Wait, can, uh, could you actually do a disk copy from a yeah, ProDOS, ProDOS from actual floppy yeah. to a if you use GSOS and you have the price with your finder, the FFC and the finder can just copy it off your point of view. You can't see the person that's a ProDOS entity. Alright, so you are still copying onto a ProDOS entity. As I said, I did not test a ProDOS 2.3. Because what I'm thinking is just treat it as a disk. Oh, I said, don't even worry about the file system, just treat it as a disk. Don't forget, GSOS cannot write to DOS 2.3. So you can't do the copy that way. Oh, so you cannot copy a DOS right. But you should be able to mount the DOS 2.3 uh, virtual image within JSON because that's from yeah, that perspective. Yeah. But you can't make a disk image of a DOS 3.3 disk and stay in the DOS 3.3 world with that. Oh, you can rewrite the DOS 3.3 FSD, make it happen? <laughs> no, no, no. No, I'm not. Okay. So there's, there's so, possibilities, but with, within the limitations we're, that we, we, we have we now. Currently. Another question. So, if it only handles ProDOS order disk, how are you getting ISO images onto it? ISO is ProDOS order. Oh, is it? Yeah, same thing. ProDOS, ProDOS order is it's just magic. It's just a block dump, which is the same thing as ISO, which is the same thing as HDB, which is the same thing as raw. Okay, so because ISO are flat formats and just after two, I see ISO uh, well, images on other computers. I, a .ISO file is a ProDOS order. ProDOS order just happens to be the same. In terms of how the disk structure is, just like an ISO file. But as you noted, the actual file system within a .ISO file could be HSFS, it could be F uh, MS DOS, it could be you know, all this other stuff. Yeah. Okay. But so, from a file system perspective, which is different from the extension perspective, you have to have an FST that supports the file system. So, FST is a file system, not the extension of your disk image. Does that clarify? Where the boundaries are? It's just a list of bytes. Yeah. Okay. Just and whether you have an FST that can read it. And right. I understand the concept of FST, but I'm, I'm not understanding you know, ProDOS. The ProDOS order, is ProDOS order isn't magic. It's actually clean compared to the ProDOS, well, the, the, the ProDOS order is in some ways a misleading name, but it, all it is is, you know, pretty much every modern storage device is organized in a sequence of 512 byte blocks, and it's just a copy of all those blocks in sequence. That's all the ProDOS order is. So that can represent the file system. Within that, it's just a copy of whatever the raw blocks on the disks are. The problem is, the problem is DOS order was really, DOS order, um, I, I believe the problem was from the DOS order, how they initially did 256 sectors as separating, right. uh, uh, putting order of, the, of, a, of, a, of a DOS 3.3 sector as a structure of a disk image versus the, the natural block order, which changes everything between ProDOS and DOS 3.3. Well, it wasn't the natural block order before ProDOS. But, yeah. And that's the, the uh, <laughs> argument from that. So it's, 
Unfortunately, we are in this in the Apple II's. We have this. There, but, there, but we, there, uh, in the last year of Juice GS, there's been a lot of writing on all these topics. So there's, there's has there? Good, yeah. Huh? Really? Did you know wow. that? I, I I haven't spent the last hour working on that. No. So there's a useful reference to refer to. Well, I'll I'll pick up my GS. Juice GS. That's all. Is there a treat for that? Yeah. None of us worked on that at all. That's a good idea. So is there any specific part you wanted to uh, mail on or or? I don't want you to forget the like, yeah, so, yeah, surprised me. Yeah, so I can use like biomes, ISO volumes, and HFS volumes. Yeah. 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 So yeah, ISO, HFS. Uh, okay. Me, all I did yeah. My HFS, HFS Protoss. Think of those as basically identical from a just image perspective. Yeah. They're containers. They're not. They don't describe any data. They just lay out where, how the bytes are ordered on the disk. Right. That's all that they specify. Right. So therefore, if you're dealing with a disk image and it's formatted for ProDOS, uh, GSOS says, oh, hey, I know how to read a ProDOS disk, and it right. shows it to you. But if right. it's formatted for um, you know, something else that there's no FST for, it's just going to say, I don't know what this is. Do you want to initialize it? I understand. Okay, because right. I'm understanding. Like, how could an HFS disk be a ProDOS order? Because an HFS disk is also a sequence of 512 byte blocks. Okay. So therefore, you can. Take an Apple II and put even a, 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 two, a, a 2E with a 3.5, put an HFS disk in there that it can't read and it knows nothing about, but it can go through and read block 0, read block 1, read block 2, all the way up to block 1600. And then in the end, you've got an image file that represents that HFS disk. Okay, and, and block 0 of an HFS disk will not contain the Prodos boot code, right. Right. but the block 0 of a Prodos disk will. Right. And, and that's the difference. And, you, and then you can take that file that you made, even on an Apple II of an HFS disk that it can't read, but then you take that file, you put it on a Mac, you expand it back with a Mac utility that can do it, and then you'll have a functional Mac disk. Like or I've, you can taken, just mount it on a Mac. I've taken some of the CD-ROMs that are available, like all of them, I think, and I've made used my PC to make an ISO image of that CD. I then change the extension from ISO to PO, and I can mount that in my 2GS emulator. The right. actual hardware of a CD-ROM, a hard disk, a 3.5-inch drive, are basically identical in terms of not identical logically, in terms of logically identical right. to write data to the physical magnetic media or, or optical media. So that's why uh, ISO Protoss order is identical because it's it's uh, it's like the the logical media is identical. Right. Okay. It's just. Every modern storage device is organized as a sequence of 512 byte blocks, so therefore you can image them with anything. But DOS 3.3 disks were a little bit different, so that's why there's these other formats. And then there's also 2MG, which is, in a, rather than just the raw data, it has a little bit at the beginning which describes what to expect. So that way an emulator can know what to expect. But then the emulator has to know what that is. Yes, I realize it's a bit abstract, and I think it's a great question. And want to make sure we should that have a roundtable on disk images. I, it could be a good idea for our next for another K fest. Any other questions about uh, what we've done? I have no idea what the time it looks like. It's four thirty-three at the moment, so we're doing very good on time. Um, anything that people want to see specifically, or <coughs> sorry, can you finish that? Yeah, I can. Uh, you, you can make, well. Your file system is, is specifies how your what your limits of file names are. Protoss is fifteen characters. HFS is thirty select characters. Um, so uh, that's a file system issue. That's nothing to do with the squat port VHT. Because I thought I misunderstood. I thought I didn't see this name. Maybe it was there and I didn't see it when you were on the two GS. Oh, that's uh, different. The thing is. Yes. Very observant, Jim. Yes. I, I did make a comment, but I, I will reiterate. This is the USB stick that I use on the 2GS. Right. I use a different USB stick for the 2CI. Right. Different set of uh, files, file oh, systems. Okay. Okay. Just, uh, just to demonstrate the concept of the different files. I can always move this as well, and you can see a lot more yeah, uh, hard disk size images. Right. You actually had different content. Space. Uh, uh, yes, yes, I, I, you're right. I did not explicitly state that, but um, I will now. Very different. You can never tell what question some of them will come Yes, Robert. I'd like to propose an experiment. Please. Let's see if we can do the 2C off of the smart. Uh, we, we, I, 
Because it sure looked like a try. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah control yeah. reset and pop uh, up to floppy. Get power off this off. Right. Well, um, right now it's going to try to boot into GSO. Yeah, it's going to throw an error. error. But, but um, if we put a real image off, on device one. All right. So what we're going to do is, and I might need some hand holding because this is where I've never. This is where I was a very much a 2GS person only and did not look at the 8 bit side of things. Do you have like, the system? Oh, the one, 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 one. Oh, um, are we downloading a us eight disk image? Good idea. Yeah. Is, um, the fastest way. Yeah. Um, I, I was looking for one. Do you want me to do it? Yeah. Do it on this one. Yeah. Well, isn't the the one forty k disk on there? I'll get a one process. Got it. It's. I don't know how to. And just save it to the big hall location. I'll leave it. Not exactly. So give us a moment uh, to set this up. And I'm going to get two of so um, Eric is coming back with something uh, and so meanwhile um, I have a picture that we imposed the smartport VHD with um, a 2GS and I had this briefly show but I'll have this up a little bit longer uh, where you can see the smartport VHD a, uh, um, this is actually an SD based uh, USB stick. So the SD card goes inside it, but it's connected by USB. Here you can see what it looks like on a, maybe a typical 2GS uh, with a couple of 3.5 inch drives, 5 inch quarter inch drive. Um, I actually did wire this incorrectly, but I wired it so it's only got the front shot, not the back shot. Um, we've got where the uh, Spot Pro PhD fit in the chain. Uh, no, the daisy chain order is supposed to be 3.5 inch drives. Does it, whichever one, the uh, drive one is going to be the first one, who, whatever you want to do, one, two, which I like doing. Then you chain it to the, the smart port VHD, then the 5 to one drive gets chained in. Um, and of course, drive one gets clicked to the 2GS. I don't know. I'm um, honestly, I'm so this is what, what, what it looks like on a. Uh, it seems like something on a, on a very posed 2GS system. So when can you get a real 2GS keyboard? I have one. It's upstairs. That's actually my keyboard. Yeah. He yeah. volunteered a, uh, a great post on. That's actually my lid on, on a, another 2GS. Um, his monitor, his keyboard. But it's very it's a very cool seeing many people with the extended keyboard, um, even at KFest, on the 2GS, so um, I really like extended keyboard so much better than the 2GS oh, yes. keyboard. Same I like the look of the 2GS keyboard. I don't like the feel. Uh, the, uh, this guy, I, the feel doesn't bother me at all. Um, I, I just like all. I just like all the extra keys. I like the, the inverted key yeah, for the arrow keys. The, the arrow keys. Um, I worry a little. The uh, page up, page down. There's a lot of things I took full advantage of uh, within the uh, when I was using the TGS more as a dedicated computer. Uh, yeah. And I figure it's now naturally go to the extended keyboard, not the TGS keyboard. They're very frustrated when the arrow keys are not in the right place, uh, the control key in the wrong place. Uh, some people argue the control key has to be next to the A key, it should not be down in the lower left hand corner. So if push comes to shove, this will be 140k, right? Yeah, yeah, that's, that's, yeah, yeah. Okay. That's why I, I really wanted think, to be. Oh, you want 140k? Well, I don't care what it is. We just have to, um, we just want to uh, I would So I, I know I have a pro, I know I have a 203. Uh, I would, I would just rename drive 1.IMV to drive 8.IMV and make that as drive 1. Well, there's a new one. <laughs> and Protoss order, correct? Uh, Yes, yes. So Eric is getting the USB stick they set up. They were named IMG. Yes. But it's not IMG. Yeah, it's why. 
It's Kurdos. He, he, he versus a two IMG file, it's dot IMG, and I believe Cedric uh, chose dot IMG because that was something Cytopress was calling. I he said because Cytopress is the reason why he, he looked at this. Uh, I again don't use Cytopress, so I don't know how it tries to default names. I didn't want him to get the extension. Yes, yes, I, yeah, I, I, I trusted Eric. I would have made a comment if. Uh, I felt he was going astray. Don't Thank worry. you for checking. We'll lead him astray. Way too often, I think. Collection lead. Perdo say version 402 system. Yes, that's good. Any other questions about anything else while we get this uh, uh, experiment uh, set up and ready to go? <coughs> yes, yeah. Did you want me to break your food just now? 30 seconds. Um, this is a DSK, so it should oh, be. Eric is. Pretty much getting uh, I, ha I have a, I have a boot image for four for two or three right here. So let's see what drive is this going to be? It's going to be like the D drive, I think. E or something like that. Yeah. that any, other, any other questions about anything else? So those who haven't noticed, this is like two GS has. Well, if, if I put this card back <coughs> in, that, and I just had it out because of some testing from last night. Uh, does have nine cards in it, so those who want to see a very, very fully populated two GS. Uh, and notice he's got. But two GS was being showed off. What was that? And, and notice that he's got a non-standard power supply. It's the inner drive, so yeah, yeah, it needs, it needs the beefier power supply to handle the extra load. Yeah. Uh, it's more coincident is that you know, uh, initially went the uh, internal hard disk um, from the get go, um, and, just, and I think that's why I started going from three about three cards where where you're supposed to replace the two just parts play anyway. Uh, yeah, um, and so that's when that's when I went uh, into uh, mass storage, and so it just made sense to get the beefier internal uh, uh, power supply hard disk combination. And I'm surprised that it still works. This is the original hard disk in it. And uh, I've gone through more SCSI drives, but this stupid free whatever ID drive still clicking. Well, it's not clicking, it's actually funny. Oh, that's fine. Official card how it is. You have to separate all the cards and stuff. It's very, very crowded inside there. I mean, eject it. Okay. So this is a 140K image, but drive one. It's drive one. Great. And the fluffy drive is ejected, so. We have to move the uh, screen back. Oh, yes. So, great. I didn't look for us. You made a drive one? I did drive one. I'm not complaining about being a GSO at this game. This is different. <laughs> I was watching what you're doing here, so I'm assuming it's just that. No, 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 that's what moving drives around. Oh, I made mean, drive one, drive eight, and I made mean, this drive one. So this is the right off. Okay, Ed, you have to re have a rescue the day. Well, you had a, a system disk on there? I, I use it. That, that no, is on the drive initially. That was the third drive, I think, drive three with the 140K. That's a 2GS system disk. Oh, it's a 2GS. Well, no, it was a 140K disk. Uh, turn off the... Yeah. 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 Uh, 
that was the Thank you, Eric, for trying. Um, it has another idea of how to make this work, so we'll get it done in about two, three minutes. Yeah, this is far the way. This this was my Apple Talks group drive. That's why that was there. I said she said you have a plan. So this goes hard right now. Yes, this never shows people. Um, you know, the little you know. Sense. Sense. Yeah. Sense. Yeah. Sense. I have stuff in which they're all right. No, I know that. Yes, what he did was correct. But um, this possibility, uh, I don't know what, 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 what that is. Yeah, that's the process. That's what it is to do in this case. Right. Why would you express that? It's a music festival in Alaska. We have a bunch of bands that come from the country. It doesn't like the industry. Yeah. So I must have a. I mean, it's just not sure. Okay. Oh, right. 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 Yeah, you know, I wonder if it's in Dawson or something stupid like that. Or not Dawson, but probably uh, to IMG. No, it's. Okay, how can we correct this? I'll take this part. Yeah. My last name is Technically. How do I make the products a good iPhone Daily? Delete that or rename Prodos, rename P8 to Prodos. Okay. So, I, so, so P8 has to be Prodos, right? Yeah. It's busy for us. Just click on P8. Uh, I'm not deleting it. I know it. I know it. I know I have to manually put it here. <laughs> And then back it up with part two. And then you make as many extra pieces of Thank you. 
Thanks for being patient while we deal with uh, all the just technology. Yes. Come on, come on, you can do it. Yes, see. so we booted off of the small port VHD. I was going to say, the, the, the tray is open, there's no diskette. <laughs> yeah, the, no, no, no diskettes were used in this boot. We yeah. let slip so we know that it had a the uh, disk for probably knows it. And now, this is 7.3, yeah, it should be, right? Yeah. Oh, and now we can find OC a lot more disk images. So yeah, we have I can't, the I know. system I, disk. I know what you're saying. Jeff? Oh, tap. Yes. Can you explain to the TV audience what we just did? Uh, what we did was uh, I had modified the GSOS um, system um, installed disk. So, Products 8 is the boot um, uh, sys 8. Uh, application instead of Prodos. So we're now printing from the. So because of that, we can make we, can, we made that two GS system install disk a an eight bit install disk. So we can now boot the Smartport Smartport VHD as a three point five inch drive on the uh, on a two C or a two E with a liner on card, but not a two C plus. Yes. All right, um, so we can prove that all the, uh, so we can see that we have more than uh, three or four uh, drives by cycling through. So if the system disk which we booted from, RAM is RAM, and we, so, no, so systems is one, mounted is two, last GS is three, special registers is four, special is five, HD four one six. So we got more than four uh, Tronos 8 uh, file systems, or more than four devices on the slot 5 uh, smart port VHD device. And I did say that the limit of Prodos is 8, right? You said 10. No, the device is 10, but uh, oh, Prodos right. has a limit of... No, you can do all 10 with Prodos. Prodos? OK. I, you can only do 4 with Prodos, 1.9. All right, yeah, I don't know Prodos 8 too well. So we proved that it works. Was there any more than this? No, that, that was all that I had here. So yes, right, cool. great question to ask. We Sorry. killed more time to get it done. Yeah, but we got it done. Well, there's something to know. I have a regular two disc <laughs> boot. HP was my boot disc. That's fine. All right. Um, I will end shop. One, one last question. Okay, one last question. When does Cedric expect to have? That's a great question of availability. Um, I did not ask that specific question, um, and uh, I do not know the answer. He probably doesn't know. I, he, I believe in the correct answer, it will be ready when it's ready. So, with that, um, if you have any additional questions, you can see me after hours. I'll love to do any more demos, discussions, talks, or whatever. Uh, thank you very much. We have dinner soon.